Louisiana style red beans and rice, oyster and artichoke bisque, Louisiana jambalaya. Welcome to Dishing It Out Louisiana Style. I'm Angela Bertone, your host. In Louisiana, we love to cook, we love to eat, and we love to talk about it. In Louisiana, we not only cook with our hands, we cook with our hearts. Some people call that Southern hospitality. We call that a way of life. How about some fried quail, greens, homemade french fries, the best you've ever tasted by the way, and strawberry dump cake. Let's get started. We're going to start out with our greens and we're going to put some bacon grease into our pan. We have some fresh cut up washed kale, I have some ham pieces, and we have an onion. And pretty much that's all we're going to put in it. Alright, so we're just going to chop up our onion while the grease is getting hot. Now, if you have a large pan, as opposed to us making a, you know, a small meal, go ahead and use a half an onion or so, but this is not a very large amount that we're going to cook. We're just going to get that onion frying in the grease. My mother never threw bacon grease away. She always saved it uh, because it was really good for flavoring um, whenever you were making any kind of fresh vegetables. So just chop up our ham. And I like it small, just so that whenever I'm scooping up a bite, I don't have a large piece of meat in with my greens. All right, we're just gonna fry this down a little bit. One um, thing in particular about greens of any sort, whether it's kale, mustards, turnips, whatever greens you're gonna be cooking, they, are really, they look really large to begin with, so it can be deceptive as to how much salt the greens are gonna cook down to a very small portion as compared to how they look whenever they're, uh, when they're raw. You see how the onion is a little bit translucent? That's when you know you've cooked them enough. You can cook them down longer if you'd like, but I'm gonna incorporate my greens and I'm gonna fry it still a little bit with the greens. So we just don't want them steamed. We want them to be fried. And as you put your kale in or greens, whatever type you choose, you're gonna have to probably put them in in portions. As you can see, it's gonna fill my pot they're gonna wilt, and as they wilt, you'll be able to put more into the pan. You see how that cooks down? It's all with the, you know, sticking out the top. And you see how quick it wilts down, so we'll just add to it. And if you notice, I'm not salting it yet. One major difference that I find in today's generation compared to when I was a little girl watching my mom or other women in the area that were friends or neighbors, they would cook their greens like for a long time. Uh, and most of their garden vegetables were, were cooked basically until they were just completely wilted and very, very tender. Well, our generation, we like to have things a little bit more raw, not cooked so long. We were taught um, later on in life that the more you cook your food, you actually, and you kill it, you're killing some of the nutrients in it. So. My family likes theirs pretty green, not cooked for two or three hours, so this isn't a long process to do. Now all we're going to do for seasoning, the salt meat, or the, in this case it's ham, our onions, a little bit of salt if any, and then black pepper. Some people enjoy a vinegar or maybe a pepper vinegar on the table and to sprinkle it right on the top of your greens after you've plated your food. And it's, a, it's almost like what you'd put on a salad. You think of a green salad with a vinaigrette dressing, it's similar to that. So there you have it. Look at this, what it was in, all piled up to the top. And now look how much it's cooked down. Just little bits at a time, adding it. We're just going to set this aside and we're going to let this cook not a whole lot longer. We want to make sure that everything is tender, so I'm going to go ahead and season it. This is black pepper and I'm going to taste a piece before I put salt in it. I'm not even going to salt it because I can taste that the leaves are already salty and I don't want to risk over salting it. So I'm going to go ahead and just move it over. What we're going to do next is we're going to prepare our quail and we're going to deep fat fry it. Here's our quail, and we 
have our flour mixture. Okay, so we have three cups of self-rising flour, and we're adding to that about a half a cup of cornmeal. And we're just gonna mix that together and after we dip our quail into a mixture of sour cream and eggs, then we're gonna flour it in here. And I like to use a large container to help contain the mess because it is pretty messy. It's one of the reasons I don't like to fry. Now it's not common, actually I don't really know if anybody I've ever met puts cornmeal when they make um, fried chicken or fried uh, fowl of any kind, but I find that it makes it a little bit crunchier, and if you don't put very much in the ratio of flour to cornmeal, it adds a little bit of crunch, but you don't notice that it's actually cornmeal that you're tasting, so that's a little secret that my mama didn't even know. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, add, check on our greens, add a little bit of water to those greens. I'm gonna give it a stir. And we're just gonna put a lid on it and let those greens simmer. I've got my quail already cut up, so we're gonna take a commercial break, and when we come back, we'll get all this mixed up in our batter, we'll roll it in our flour. By that time, our grease ought to be good and hot, and we'll get this fried up for you. We'll be right back. Welcome back. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna make our mixture to uh, marinate our quail in, and what I have is about a cup and a half of sour cream, and I'm gonna add some Louisiana hot sauce, or I'm not even really sure what brand it is, I just know it's hot sauce. So we're gonna stir that in. I've got two eggs. Now I've had somebody ask me before, you know, why are you using sour cream as opposed to milk? Um, and that's how my mother fried her um, chicken or pork chop, pretty much anything she dipped into a, um, a mixture before she rolled it in flour. Uh, everybody I know used milk, but what I found was it didn't actually stick to the meat like I would like so that I would have to double dip it in my flour. And then it's really messy and I already don't like frying stuff like this. So by using the sour cream, a couple of things happens. It, it clings to the meat um, and I don't have to double dip. I can do it one time. I can even mix some of my flour into it and make a batter if I'd like to. But this is just a really easy way to get a crunchy coating without having to use the double dipping method and which is so messy anyway. All right, so now we're gonna season it up. So that's it. Sour cream, eggs, our spices, and a little hot sauce. We're gonna put our quail in here. Live, it jumped away from me, you saw that. And now, see what I mean by messy? The kids like this kind of stuff, and I guess I did when I was little, and it does feel good, but it's just kind of yucky. So I'm just mixing it. If this was milk, it would not coat that heavy. So by using sour cream, sour cream has more flavor, but it's also gonna give you that good heavy coating. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to drop some pieces into my flour. And when I drop it in, I like to make sure it's not dropping on top of each other. And I'm gonna wash my hands and come back to the bowl because I find it easier if I have one dry hand and one wet hand. And so I'm gonna do that. Toss the flour mixture over the top of the quail. And I'm gonna take it out and set it on this little plate here just so that you can see See how well the um, mixture stays on there? It's like really nice and thickly coated. Another little trick you can add to this flour mixture, if you'd like, is a little bit of Italian breadcrumbs. And again, I would say maybe a quarter of a cup, along with the cornmeal as well. And it just gives it a little bit different flavor. Um, works really well for fried chicken or fried quail. And if you notice how small these are, they're gonna fry up really fast. This breast is a little bit larger, so it's gonna take a little bit longer to fry. And so when I put the pieces in, I wanna pay attention to what size it is as to how long I'm gonna let it cook. And you don't wanna overcook quail because it will be tough, 
but um, I'll let it cook long enough just to get the darkness of the, the, uh, the crust. I want it to be a golden brown, not a light, light brown. My granddaughter thinks this is the best fried chicken. She knows it's not a chicken, but she's never seen a quail, so she just calls it bird. So I went on my first quail hunt. I had never been quail hunting before, and I shot the first three that got up. Not that I'm bragging or anything. I'm sure it was beginner's luck. I'm just saying. All right, this looks great. So we're going to just have these off to the side. We're going to fry those as soon as my oil gets hot. I want to show you a, a trick if you're not going to use a um, thermometer, take a little bit of your marinade, mix it in with some of your flour, and just make like a little dough ball. And we're going to drop this in the grease, and if it's hot enough, it's going to float right to the top. So let's see if we, we got it. It is. You see that? That's perfect. So here we go into the batter. You're going to watch how quickly this fries. And some of those are ready to come out, it looks like. Remember, that's because they're really, really little. They're not like a big giant piece of chicken. See how dark that's getting? There we have our fried quail. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our potatoes ready while our grease is still hot. And we're gonna fry up these uh, potatoes. I'm gonna show you a trick that I've done to make sure they, they stay really crunchy because homemade french fries have a tendency to wilt right after you cook them. So let me show you that. What I did was I boiled these potatoes and I put them in the refrigerator. So now when I peel them, see how that skin just comes right off? And the way that I learned this was growing up in Louisiana after I was married, my husband is one of, in my opinion, the best crawfish boiling chefs, I don't know what you call them. But one of the things, we never really ate all the potatoes out of our, our crawfish bowl. So one day I took them out of the refrigerator and I peeled them just like what I'm doing right now. And I decided to fry them like a french fry. The best french fries I ever had. Another thing you can do um, with the ones that you actually get out of the crab bowl is you can make a wonderful potato salad. So two tricks I learned from being a southern girl, growing up, eating old crawfish, and then getting married and discovering, got to figure out a way to not throw these away. You know, in Louisiana, we have our own language in case you guys have figured that out. The crawfish bowl and crab bowl is the same thing. Gonna cut these kind of narrowly along so that they're about the thickness of the french fry that you want and then we're gonna cut them across or down to make them long like a traditional french fry. Remember in the first segment I told you that my granddaughter was gonna come because the first time I ever cooked quail she thought it was just a really 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 good bird so this is Anna so we're gonna get our french fries going this is the last little bit you want to cook them until they're crunchy and crispy and golden. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to clean this mess up and I'm going to bring you our final treasure of the day, which is strawberries. So we have our strawberries and what we're going to do is we're going to make a little bit of a glaze. So in order to make that glaze, I've got a little bit of water in a pan. I'm going to put salt and sugar. So I'm just going to make a homemade glaze by slicing a few strawberries. I'm going to put a little bit of salt, not a whole lot. Salt's going to, going to bring a balance to the sweetness. So you definitely want to add a little salt. Now we're going to put some sugar. And we're going to go kind of heavy on the sugar because this is our glaze. So I'm going to say that's probably about a quarter of a cup. And I'm just going to put my hands and I'm going to mash. And then we're going to put this in the water. And we're going to have that water create our glaze. And then we're going to slice the rest of our um, strawberries up and put them in the glaze and we're going to layer it um, into our strawberry dump cake. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and put this into our water. And I'm going to save this bowl because I'm going to finish slicing all of my strawberries and then put the glaze back on top of them. Okay, I've got my strawberries in my water. I've added about a, another half a cup of sugar. So now we're going to take our um, cornstarch mixture with just a little bit of water and we're going to add that to our homemade glaze. And what this is going to do is just allow it to thicken so that my glaze is not just so watery when I pour it over my cake. Okay, 
Now while the heat is on fairly high for this glaze, if you notice I'm stirring it continually and that's because the cornstarch is heavy and it'll just sink to the bottom and then it'll gel on the bottom, which I don't want it to do. I want it to gel throughout and make my glaze for me. So that's why I'm stirring constantly. Just adding some salt. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of this sugar that's in here in this container. So now we're looking at total, probably about a cup and a quarter of sugar for my glaze. We're gonna go ahead and pour that over our sliced berry. So now that it's mixed good, it's not too hot for my hands, I'm going to go ahead and put my hands back in here and pull out some of the water from these strawberries. I want my, my cake to soak up all this juice. I don't want my cake dry. There we go. We're going to rinse this off and we're going to layer that cake up. All right, everybody. Anna's going to help me to put together our strawberry uh, dump cake or strawberry snow are the two things we call it. So we're going to first layer some um, strawberries into the bottom of our bowl. And Anna, if you would be so helpful as to take some pieces of that cake that I've cut up and just put it right in here on top of these strawberries. It doesn't matter if it breaks apart. That's even good if it does. And just put some of that cake in this bowl for me. Get some big old pieces of cake. Good job. Now we're going to pour heavy whipping cream right over the top. And I used to think, gosh, this doesn't sound like it's going to taste good. Heavy whipping cream. I was whining about it, but I can tell you this is one of my favorite ways to make a strawberry shortcake. So what we're going to do now is we're going to layer it again. Look at these strawberries, Anna. Does that look beautiful? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to finish putting the rest. Here we go. All those crumbs in there. And do you remember what goes next? The, what is it called? Heavy whipping cream. Good job. You remembered. Heavy whipping cream. This is so delicious. Paul Paul is going to be spoiled rotten, don't you think? Ooh, is he going to be excited? Yeah. Oh, it does look beautiful, doesn't it? Now we're going to put the rest of the strawberries on here. It's going to be done. We're going to have everything together. Look how beautiful. We got one last surprise to go on the cake. Do you know what it is? I'm just going to show you. How about that? Here we go. This is going to be so fun. Oh my gosh, is that delicious? Okay, so now we're going to show everybody what we made. Our strawberry dump cake. We have our fried quail, homemade french fries, and our greens, which for today is kale. And so we're going to have to plate that up for you, show you how beautiful our, our meal is. Put some french fries. What is this called again, Anna? What is this right here? A good, good, good bird. Good, good, good bird. That's right. Look how beautiful that looks. We're going to dip up some of our strawberry snow. It's a big bite. All right, our food for the soul today. We have three words. We had greens, which means to grow. Quail, which means to die. And we had straw, which means to be thirsty. So what that made me think of is when a seed goes into the ground, before it can grow, we have to water it, give it the heat, so when that seed dies, it can bring forth fruit. So think about that in your life when you're going through a hard time and you just feel like you're gonna die, but maybe it's because something's about to grow. So you guys, how good is it? Tell those people out there how good that strawberry cake is. It tastes really good. Yeah? All right, can you tell them, say, can you, can you join us next time? You can join us next time. For more of. For more of. Dishing it out Louisiana style. Thank you. All right, you guys, see you next time.